okay we better like just like be official and start first we're, yeah. we're jabber jawing no no we're just gonna... we're always going to be as if we're in the just wild in the wild but i told but um i was telling amanda gabe i don't know if you came on at tom in time to hear this but andrea you too that they're they're calling zoom the modern day seance like oh gabe is joining us now can you hear me can you hear me gabe <laughs> we can't oh, hear hilarious. you <laughs> that's hilarious i have to find that Okay, so not sure if anybody's joining us yet, but I think the ladies that normally join us are going to want to hear all about the um, Winter Institute, which was so fun. I didn't worry about COVID once, except for on the plane. Except for oh, wow. Plane. Yeah, no, I really didn't. I was, was going like, to ask if that felt comfortable. It looked fun. I was fine. I felt fine. The plane There's was a lot of people room. in those rooms. There was a lot of people. There were a lot of, it was a big room with a lot of people. And, yeah. and amazingly, zero COVID in those rooms. So it's kind but, of odd how that works. I mean, I don't know, maybe because I had it recently that I didn't, get, but I don't know, whatever. I haven't heard of anybody yet that got it. I was worried, but I still had a lot of fun. But you, you were, but you were worried, Amanda, but you were very protective of yourself. I mean, you wore a mask, you had your ear thing. So it's like you. No one saw my face the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> And you, and you are fine. Yeah. Uh, so far, I mean, I don't know how many I'm, days these days. It'd yeah, be so definitely, to... definitely going to keep testing just for yeah. a few more days. And... Who knows? The but... Seattle airport was kind of harrowing. Um, coming back through. Okay, that's. Through... I'm sorry, Gabe. I know you go up there quite a bit too. That's the worst freaking airport I think on the planet. SeaTac. SeaTac was no, terrible. No. No, have you been to uh, Denver? I thought Denver. Yeah, have you been to LaGuardia lately? No, uh, the, I mean, that's L-A-X. L-A-X. I don't know. I it's was like, I was not impressed with SeaTac. It had it. The signage was bad. <laughs> Even Mallory and I, we were walking from our plane to go to baggage claim and ended up going down a terminal for uh, more gates. Anyways, I, don't know, I look at the signs, but <laughs> the sign, I turned. I went back, and there was not a. I went back. I said, "We are not this dumb." That signage. <laughs> so did you go from the? Did you land at the end gates or the C gates? The I think gates we were at A. Um, it we're, we're, A. We went walking down. I think we were at A. We landed at A. I think. Man, you would have been like in the C's or the ends. Is I took off an end. I was in the end gate, and it was like up an escalator, down an escalator, up an Catch escalator, train. down the rail, up an escalator, down. <laughs> It was crazy. It it's happen. not the greatest. It just, I think it's got more traffic than it's set up for. Yeah. Anywho, so back to the author things. Author things were amazing. I was saying earlier in the green room, had a fantastic dinner with Abraham Berghese. Helen McDonald could be my new best friend if she wanted to be. <laughs> She's rad. <laughs> Jerry's still out on that. If, if she wanted to be my best I told, friend, I, totally I would like to be her. Best her. Friend. I ambushed her. Uh, I was waiting uh, by the elevator to go she to told the me. author reception. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she and told I, me. I, I looked over <laughs> and there was this like really dapperly dressed woman. And I like looked and looked, looked back and then looked again. I'm like, oh my God, you're Helen McDonald. I just finished your book on the airplane. She's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she told me. She goes, um, I, one of your co-workers, I think it's a, it was very surreal having my book quoted back to me <laughs> because you quoted a line to her, I think. So thanks, Andrea, yeah. for sending that to me. Yeah, Helen's, uh, well, I knew you were, it's totally up your alley, but uh, Helen is cool. I, um, I had the distinct pleasure of um, touring her, helping her tour around um, Utah and New Mexico for um, the first great book that she wrote, nonfiction, H is for Hawk, and um, had a great time and um, ended up interviewing her. And, you know, I never really uh, went and got that like published and polished up, which is stupid. Uh -huh. My problem was, but um, it was a great interview. Like we had a great exchange, but anyway, she's, she's awesome. Yeah. She, she was fantastic. She was absolutely fantastic. She was just, a, and Andrea, there's another book. I can't think of the name of the author. Um, oh, she's from Turkey, lived in Germany. I've got that book too. She was, she was adorable. I'll, I'll think of it. It's not coming out for a while or no, it's not coming out for a while, but Tom, 
your author. Benjamin, Benjamin Labatutes. Benjamin Labatutes. I have to get used to saying his name. I'm going to have to unpack that for a while now. That <laughs> it's going to be. <laughs> so that's, gonna... that's, that's the author that Javier Ramirez from Exile and Bookville uh, mentioned that he was the most excited to meet. Right. So Beth, when you're, Beth's on here and she says that Warwick's on the road, that was the author that Javier said he wanted to meet. So I ended up sitting next to him at a dinner <laughs> and Javier sat on the other side of him. Um, whoa, it was well, that's, how you, that's how I felt finishing the book. Wow. Yeah. That's something that it was truly mind exploding. And I, and I, it's like the kind of book I seriously wanted to, I, once I closed it, I want to open it up again and start it all over again and then yeah, go back I, i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm smart enough to read it you are you are okay i all mean right. it'll make you feel smarter okay but uh i mean i think so i maybe i'm not smart enough but i felt like he made me feel the book it does it's very surprisingly approachable even though okay. it's science and history and big ideas metaphysics the yeah, whole history he, of, the, of the last hundred years he was all over the map he was so much fun That's we great. shared a napkin that shows you how close we got. <laughs> Intimate. Um, Anywho. <laughs> what about Kylie Reed? Did you interact? I never got to see her because we were just so, I was kind of oh. trapped where I was. Okay. So she was, I saw her from a distance. She was like a table away. It was Colson Whitehead was at that dinner. Um, Emma Straub sat across the table for me. Emma's my girlfriend. She, and she called you out in her newsletter. Did you see that? No. Yeah, she's she's talked about how great how much she loves being around booksellers and and librarians, but mostly booksellers. And she sees old friends like Julie from Warwick's. Aww. I need to find that so, news. So letter. even if Helen McDonald is not your new best friend, I think pretty sure Emma Straub. <laughs> Emma Straub is. Yeah. Emma Straub took a picture of me. <laughs> Okay, wait a minute. I know we're not getting started very quickly here. And we're, we're, I promise, I promise like I got books to talk about. I promise we'll get to books, but they did the Bibli Oasis did this thing. They did bookseller trading cards that were so cool. And Amanda is one of them. Oh, I saw her. I saw that on her. So Emma Straub media. was like doing the Pokemon. Now she understands her kids like trying to find them all. There's wow, Amanda's that is got incredible. a trading card. Isn't that cool? ridiculous yeah. who else who else from the west coast anybody else from the west I have no coast idea. I have oh, idea. You, you didn't see like the whole pack or i yeah i saw some of them but i didn't pay attention I was, was like, I'm, I was not like in there, so. I'm not in there so why do i care i was just excited amanda was i was just like i was excited amanda was in it. okay and that was th that was thanks to javier because he nominated me oh did he okay um, yeah. it was really and they is had there, one of the best bags they had one of the best tote bags i have to say is there a way to see who like i want to see all the other trading cards is it some uh, i have a stack of them <laughs> i'll show them to you sometime <laughs> anywho so it was a really it was fabulous lots of so many good books coming i mean i can't even describe so let's get going gabe's board because we're not talking about <laughs> oh it God, I'm wrecking my neck. <laughs> So it's going to go, uh, Amanda, are you going to talk about books today? No, I'm just hanging out. Okay. You can hang out. Okay. <laughs> so, so then it's going to go Gabe, Tom and Andrea is who's going to, um, oh, up. and look who was in the house. Kim DeVoe. Yeah. Oh, Hello. Started yet. Hi, Kim. Hi Kim. All right. Hi. So it's going to go Gabe, Tom, Andrea and Kim. So Gabe. Hey, Kim, you would think you're late, but actually we're just starting now. I know. I, I heard I you. I, I heard you uh, just, just, yeah, talk about Winter I Institute. couldn't stop talking. I could stay here for a whole hour and talk about Winter Institute. It was so much fun. So I anyways. I had a good time. It's not, it's good. It's good. You had a good time. Right. I'm, so, I'm so jealous. All right. Wow. Gabe's, Gabe's giving me the hook. Woo! He's got to slide up. Go Gabe. Uh, just, uh, the newest book from, uh, Shannon Chakabarty, the author of City of Brass. And uh, that series there, Kingdom of Copper, Empire of Gold. Uh, this is her latest effort. It's a really big book for us. We got a great package on this. And it's a big adventure story, um, uh, a big pirate adventure story. Uh, Amina Sarafi is uh, one of the more notorious pirates of the Pacific of the Indian Ocean. And she retires to a quiet life. And one day, one of her shipmates... Um, uh, mother, wife comes to see her and asks, uh, his daughter has been kidnapped and she offers her a fortune to get her back. 
So she gets the band back together and off they go adventuring and doing piratical stuff. Uh, but it doesn't seem like things are what they appeared to be or what she was told they were going to be. So there is some uh, skullduggery afoot and a little bit of magic that we don't see coming. I've never heard anyone say that word out loud before, and I'm really impressed. Thank you. Skullduggery? Is that the one? A parad piratical. No, no. Skull skullduggery. <laughs> All right. Game. I was impressed with piratical. I think. Yeah, I that was also. I always want to be a pirate. You know, um, I mean, really, you would really rock an eye patch too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you really would. Okay, I mean, right. like you're perfect for it. Gabe, is that out tomorrow? Out uh, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow? Okay. Awesome. All right, Tom. You're right about skullduggery, though. That I is, love skullduggery. I, I was like, find, wow. Find my books that feature some skullduggery. Shenanigans, you know. Shenanigans. Uh, shenanigans. So, Kim talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but it's time for me to talk about Rebecca Mackay's I Have Some Questions For You, or, or otherwise known as the, the book featuring um, Beth Doherty, right? This is the book we've been talking yes. about for yes. months for all sorts of reasons, and now it's out in, in stores. And the response has been amazing so far. The reviews are incredible. Um, so as Kim told you, the book has like kind of like everything because it has true crime because um, the main character is a true crime and Hollywood podcaster, um, rich characters. And that and what I love is a good boarding school setting. So um, Bodie Kane is the um, podcaster. She's tried to put the time, her time at the boarding school you know, in her distant past, but there was a murder among her friends that has, that was solved, but it has not, it, over the years, there have been many people who think that the person that's in prison doesn't belong there. And so it, it, so she's brought back to the school and she's teaching her course on podcasting. And of course, her students are fascinated with this crime from the past. So she's, so it's a, it's a, page turning mystery. It's super thought provoking because it's set in 2018, just as the Me Too movement is getting underway. And so there's a lot of things that that Bodie accepted at the time and the other uh, students accepted at the time that they, they think back on now and think, hey, what was going on with that? That wasn't that wasn't really right. Um, and then it gets to uh, uh, wrongful imprisonment and incarceration. There's there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff to discuss, like in a book group, because there's so much. But it's such a good story and a good mystery. And she's so, it's, she's just such a smart writer. I've loved Rebecca Mackay since we uh, first published The Borrower. That's what I also love. I love to tell people, don't think this is her second novel. A lot of people right. think this is her second novel. Right. Borrower was terrific. That was her first book. 100 Year House is fantastic. Um, so go back and read early Rebecca Mackay also. Um, so I think it's going to be, you know, it's it's already a bestseller. It's going to be one of our, uh, the books that keep selling throughout the year because more and more people are gonna be telling each other, you gotta read this book. Very different from The Great Believers, you know, and that's also what defines a Rebecca Mackay book for me is it's, there's never gonna be a book that's, she's not gonna write the same book twice. She's always gonna be doing something new and different. Um, so The New Yorker says, what distinguishes Mackay's turn is her detective framing. She understands that every high school with its indelible characters and astronomical seeming stakes is a crime scene. I love that, every high school is a crime scene. And then Ron Charles in the Washington Post um, says it's um, the voice, the Bodhi's voice, so nakedly candid and bravely confessional is absolutely, absolutely convincing. I felt as captivated as though someone were whispering this whole novel just to me. Um, so, Rebecca McKay's, I have some questions for you. I have to say, I'm going to give a little warning. For me, it was one of those that it took me a little bit to get to get you, it right you talked yeah. about that with Kim yeah yeah, yeah. and so but once you're what well, it's just a little because it starts a little bit it, not slow I'm not going to say that but it's just like it's but then it's just like it it yeah. just like creeps into you and just like yeah. then all of a sudden yeah. it's just like oh my god and like you said Tom there's just so many things to yeah. talk about and it's so timely yeah so and she's timely. and she's examining the our obsession with true crime especially against yeah crimes against women like art right. you know right. that's part of what the book is about you know? yeah. yeah it's almost criticizing itself yeah correct yeah uh, honestly yeah so really yeah. smart way of like yeah it's a me in a meta way yeah it is yeah. that's right yeah um okay so we are hosting we had bonnie Grammis on friday just saying oh, uh, lessons in chemistry 
Just a just a little old book called just a, a little old book lessons called Lessons in Chemistry. Yeah, and debut. we got Rebecca. What's that? Debut. Yeah. Debut. <laughs> it's a little small debut. Um, and Friday we've got Rebecca. We'll be at Coronado. So if you're in San Diego, awesome. come down to Coronado and see Rebecca. It's going to be a great conversation. Great. It's going to be a conversation with Lacey Crawford, which is going to yeah. be such a good conversation. That's going to be, really That's gonna be yeah. amazing. Yeah. All right, Andrea, what do you got for us? I got um, a little book called Go as a River. Oh. This is by um, Shelly Reed. And I do believe that she may have been at the dinner that you were at, Julie, with a star uh, studded cast of writers. Yeah, I don't want to brag too much, but I think Shelly and I might be friends too, a little bit, because this yeah. is the second dinner that I've had with Shelly. So just saying. I'm just just saying. Well, um, you were an early reader, and so we're happy about that. Um, this is a March 2023 Indie Next pick. So um, not only Julie, but um, a whole host of indie booksellers loved and endorsed this book. And so it's on the bestsellers. It's on their, uh, you know, the indie bookstore list of um, books that they're uh, going to be um, uh, touting in March and beyond. And this is just um, an amazing debut novel. It's a coming of age story. Um, it's a love story. Um, it's a family drama. And when I say drama, I mean drama. And it's also um, deeply rooted in a place. This is based in Colorado um, in a real, uh, based on a, a real town that back in the um, 60s uh, was flooded. Um, because of a dam situation and um, this family lost their peach farm. As you can, you can see, there's a nice little peach there on the cover. Um, and um, the family is beset by tragedies. Um, our heroine, um, what a great um, character, right? Our heroine um, loses her mother i'm not going to tell too much about the story but loses her mother devastates her father her brother is gone wild and rogue and feral and um and then she meets somebody um and uh then flooding comes things happen she has to get over her bitterness um her family's not too happy with um, her beloved. Lots of things happen. I'm not going to spoil. It's it's easy to spoil this, and I'm not going yeah. to. But she has to get over her bitterness um, to learn how to love um, and, and thrive after just having everything in the kitchen sink thrown at her as a kid. And um, man, it's beautiful. Um, it's been compared to snow falling on cedars, but I kind of feel like it's more in the vein of peace like a river in terms yeah. of the writing and the character development and just the immersive storytelling. Um, and uh, there's a lot of, um, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Julie, why don't you talk about it? Um, you know, uh, you, you should go for it. It's, I mean, I'm going to take us off Sherry. Yeah, it's Andrea. It is... Beth read it at the store, loves it. It is this, and it has just a fantastic ending. So everything you said is absolutely what it's about, but it is just this great character book with really good nature writing. Also, like her talking about, you know, because her living in the, because Shelly lives in Colorado and hikes and does all the mountaineering. And so it, it's just really, a piece like a river, I think would be a better comp because yeah. it really is, um, it's just really good. It's a really good story at the heart of it. So yeah, um, and, yeah um, love it. Also, um, it's, out to, it's out tomorrow, by the way. Yeah. Um, but uh, Bonnie Garmus is quoted on the cover saying that it's completely unforgettable. So there you go. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, it's heartbreaking. It's tragic. It's got race. It's like, you know, it's got all of the, it's got all of the above. Um, yeah. it's got everything um this is but not done but not done but it, when they say it's got everything but it's not done trite it's not done it's done really well and you just like no, feel all these things it doesn't 
it doesn't read like a, a debut novel. I mean, this no. this writer's around. I mean, is like here to stay. Yeah. And um, I can't wait to see what happens um, with her sophomore offering. Right. But this is really just great. it's really good. I was it was one of those when I read it, I was like, oh, this is really good. And then I was like, but then I wanted like somebody else at the store to read it and go, because okay, it just me that I read. But it's so when Beth was like, oh, my God, Julie, it's so good. I was like, no, okay. it's really good. I, I think this is going to be um, a bestseller in the Indies for sure and beyond. And, um, you know, couldn't happen to um, a nicer person. She's lovely. Know. I hear tell from everybody uh, who's met her. Um, this is from Spiegel and Growl, and it's $28 hardcover, 320 pages. Yeah, she is lovely. She was so cute because her husband was a uh, her husband was a um, rescue helicopter ambulance flight, you know, he pilot. And so he worked really hard, really hard job the whole bit. And so when she got this deal and then some of the other rights, she was able to like, he was able to quit because he's already, he, she's older. He's like in his mid to late fifties a little bit. He was able to quit his job and like cried when he found out that oh. it's just like, yeah. Cause they were just like working, hard working people. And then there's like, uh, that's a tough thing. gig. Yeah. The that's helicopter amazing. stuff. That is a tough yeah. gig. That's amazing. All really right. Quick. We are being so slow. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Beth Johnson Gabe, says, Gabe's going to uh, leave us. Well, <laughs> if Gabe needs to do his lightning round with his next book, it's okay. <laughs> Gabe's gonna um, leave us. I go back to back. Yeah. yeah um, right. Beth, so Johnson, Beth Johnson sends special thanks to Andrea. Uh, I got The Wolf Suit by Sid Sharp for a reluctant exactly. reader. Perfect. Always a challenge for that level. I encourage anyone on the fence to get it. It's so lovely. That's so great that a reluctant reader fell in love with that story. You know, it's 120 pages long. I mean, it's it's a picture book, but it's got some girth to it. So um, that is excellent news. And I'm so happy. I love when reluctant readers are brought to the magic and joy that is literature. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right, Kim. Okay. Oh, it's my turn. It's, okay. Yeah. We, I mean, I mean, my first pick is, um, it came out last Tuesday and it's Murder Your Employer, oh. The McMaster's Guide to Homicide by Rupert Holmes. And as you probably know, Rupert Holmes wrote the famous Pina Colada song. Remember that? <laughs> and um, plus he wrote a bunch of other hit songs, several Broadway plays, two mystery novels and a TV series. Um, all of which are wildly successful. He's one of these ridiculously talented people. And um, obviously he's super talented. And his latest thriller is a dark comedy set in the 1950s involving the McMaster's Conservatory, a college dedicated to teaching students the ins and outs of how to perform the perfect homicide. The students are called deletionists, and to gain admission, they must have an ethical reason for wanting to erase someone. The target must be truly vile and deserve a fate no worse than death. The McMaster's Homicide Guide book is a self-study guide for students who can't afford admission. And it's written by the college's dean. And it, it chronicles the experiences of three former students um, and it's to teach the at-home students by example. Um, Cliff is a young engineer, Gemma is a British hospital worker, and Dulcie is an incognito Hollywood star. And all of them are trying to murder their absolutely awful employers without getting caught. And the Dean warns us at the beginning of the book that not all three students will succeed. And the ensuing story is very clever and very, very funny. And the LA Times called the McMaster's Academy a mashup of Hogwarts, Downton Abbey, and White Lotus. Mm -hmm. And I think fans of Sherlock Holmes, Anthony Horowitz, and Janice Hallett's The Twyford Code will love this book. Awesome. It's really fun. It's a really easy hand sell. <laughs> I think it's, I think... <laughs> I think it's going to be a trilogy. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Very, very. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. he's got, I think he's That'd got a great trilogy. Yeah. 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 Oh, and it's in development for, you know, TV series and everything. I forget what, yeah. what um, network. 
Oh, and, and he, that's back to go as a river is too. That's going to be um, a limited series, I think. I was going to say that Rupert Holmes did the buy the book column in the New York Times, and yes. I thought it was one of the yes, best I've read in a long time. It's he really was so good. funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And He's touching super. too. He tells he tells the story yeah. of the uh -oh. <laughs> that his uh, friend from child shared a book of poetry and. It's a right. beautiful story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, okay. He's, uh, so he's married John to like the same wife. Beth Johnson's giving us a little, a little nugget of information. Neil Patrick Harris did the audio for it. Oh, I forgot to mention that. I, I wrote that down as a note and I forgot to mention that. Yeah, I listened to a little bit of him doing it and um, he and another, <laughs> another famous actor narrated. And yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. All right, Gabe, sorry. <laughs> <You're next. laughs> <laughs> Do your thing. I'm just sitting here waiting. Did you take a Did you take a nap in between? <laughs> Got a drink of water. <laughs> so my next book is uh, Femina by Janina Ramirez. Um, this is a book that looks at women in history uh, who were not seen. So it is forgotten women, overlooked women um, through time. She's looking particularly in the Middle Ages. Um, and uh, where, how effectively women have been written out of the history of the Middle Ages. And um, until recently, in late 20th and 21st century, early 21st century here, there have been some things found. Uh, there was a woman found in uh, Sweden, or a body found in Sweden, um, a warrior with swords buried with a couple of horses that looked like they were very big, strong war horses and all the regalia that comes with a warrior and a warrior's burial um, up in Scandinavia at the time. And uh, when they did the DNA study, they found that the warrior was a woman. So um, instances like this, uh, there was a woman queen, apparently in uh, part of Europe, um, Athelflaed in Wales is overlooked, who had a prominent role in history. She's a little more well-known. But uh, she just rattles off the the the, the uh, a number of examples and the reasons why the patriarchy, the history of the times, et cetera, uh, how they were perceived. Um, and uh, some of it is her speculation on it, but her speculation is based on, you know, deep study of the times and the norms and the, the, the social mores uh, of the times. So it's a really a well put together, interesting, um, history of women who, or not history of women, it's weird, but um, check it out. Uh, serious stuff. She's a prophet, I think, like Oxford, mm. someplace like that. Good package. I like the yeah, cover. Cool package. Very cool package. All right. Must read. Okay, Tom. Okay. So, my, so during the pandemic, we published a book called uh, Wintering, which was a beautiful. Beautiful book, beautiful in every way, like the package and it just was the right book at the right time. It came out, I can't remember exactly when in 2020, but it might've been the fall of 2020, just when we're all figuring out what is going on. And she of course wrote it before the pandemic, but it was about this concept of wintering and that it's okay. Sometimes we need to come go within ourselves and of course then <laughs> that was that was by choice in during the pandemic. We, we all had to figure out how to do that. So it became this big, big bestseller. Very, uh, just a really nice surprise. So, and she's back now with a new book out tomorrow called Enchantment, Awakening Wonder in an Anxious Age. And so she just has a knack for publishing books at when we need them. Um, so this is, you know, a post-pandemic book, if I can call it that, like when we're all venturing out, when we're going to, I went to see Bruce Springsteen last week, you went on, or, uh, <laughs> Um, to a uh, conference, that's the word I'm looking for. So we're all we're all we're all finding our wonder in different ways, but it's not easy. It's anxiety producing, and so it, so in the same it's the same format as wintering. Um, talking about her own struggles with work and family and the after effects of the pandemic, um, and the, the feeling of being overwhelmed as the world tells you it's time to re-engage and go out there, but you're feeling anxiety about it. So it's all those things 
Um, and it's a very reassuring book. And she has a she's a poet, beautiful writer, and she has a really great way of putting these ideas out there. So on sale tomorrow, Enchantment. Looks good. It's really good. It's good. Yeah, it's nice. Yep. And we need it. We all need it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and that's the 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 um that's the fun thing about going to like Winter Institute too, with like meeting up with people is like knowing that what you're going through and is normal or that other people are going through it too, you know. And I think that that's what she's probably bringing. I'm, I'm hoping Tom is frozen yeah. and not just staring at me. Um, deeply totally thought. deeply thoughtful uh, looking at me like you don't know what the hell you're talking about julie but that's okay <laughs> technology <laughs> all right tom we're moving on you froze up on us am i still gone yeah I'm still frozen we're moving you're on just, <laughs> we could hear you it's the, seance. Movie again? it's the seance all right we're gonna go to andrea now <laughs> <laughs> tom are you there say something if you're there <laughs> Tap three times oh, on the ceiling. Uh, he's busy I'm, I'm dying Water to read this, smoker. Andrea. Pardon me? I'm dying to read this. Oh, yeah, this is uh, really great. Um, this is Scorched Grace, a sister holiday mystery. Um, apparently, there's more in the works, in the pipeline, in the literary right. pipeline. Yeah, right, it's a series, yeah. Yeah, from uh, Margot Duahy. Uh, this is 2795. It is out now or um yes it uh published february 21st this is from um zando which is and then um jillian flynn books there's an imprint mm -hmm. um so jillian flynn is uh the editor um of this uh so we're excited about that um this new imprint from jillian um and this is ba basically the story is sister holiday a chain smoking, um, heavily tattooed queer nun in recovery has no choice basically, but to um, embark on um, uh, uh, some sleuthing and put her amateur sleuthing skills to the test um, as bodies begin to pile up at her New Orleans parish. The first one um, occurs, um, by fire hence the scorched grace title um and um, this is just really a reimagining of the hard-boiled uh, genre and it really works well it's it's so pacey and well written and um the last 10 pages are something else and um just you wait it is a rollicking ride and um let me see, what do, what do we have? Jillian Flynn says, within five pages, I was in love with this novel. The voice is unique and confident, the sense of place deeply present and the plotting completely assured. Every time I was about to ask a question about Sister Holiday, her background, her drive, the mysteries, um, the answers suddenly magically appeared. Sister Holiday is simply a joy of a narrator that's right. This is told for, in the first person from Sister Holiday's perspective, and um, she's got a great voice. Um, it's just so great. I mean, you know, it's like it's, you know, she's a. Um, I mean, she really could have. She could be a detective, like in the old hard-boiled um, um, genre. Even though she's just, she's a sister and like trying to work out some issues. Um, because you know she's got she's got those faults just like all those detectives did right and um so uh do he really plays up on that um on that part um uh, what else does uh Jillian say this novel is so much more than a mystery which is my favorite kind of mystery it's an exploration of faith love and the worthy struggle to be a better human i just loved it it's really great i um I just, I couldn't, you know, like we have to read a lot of books in manuscript form before we go out to um, talk to booksellers about the list. And I just, you know, I, I try to get like 30 to 50 pages of like, especially the lead titles for each of my publishers. But um, I just had to finish it because it was so great. It was just such a great read and people are having fun with it. There's, um, um, I think it's Vanity, yes, Vanity Fair just came out 
um, last week in the February issue. There's a feature there, um, a New York Times rave last week, which is great to see. Um, the Los Angeles Times is going to do a profile if it hasn't already happened sometime this week, um, I think. And um, it's just on the most anticipated lists everywhere. And did I say that it's a March 2023 Indie Next pick too? So cool. a lot of things working uh, for this one. So yeah. Okay. My favorite quote might have been the sister, she's got some issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> am, I, am I back? Am I? You're back. Okay. Back. You're back. So, uh, well, my hear. question is my question, Andrea, is is, is she's chain smoking? Um, what else? Uh, is she foul mouthed also? Which uh, I hope she is. Yeah, she's uh she's definitely I mean, while also way. being reverent, I'm sure in some way she's a yeah, I mean sister. she's just not somebody. I mean, she ain't the flying nun, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that. Right. The frying nun. Hey, hey, so grace. Um, yeah, I have, I mean, I have I to say it. also Jillian Flynn really knows what she's doing. Um, I got one of the most highly coveted tote bags at Winter Institute from, oh. from, so it's got a cat on it. Awesome. It's gusseted for maximum book carrying <laughs> got nice. hand straps and an extendable mm, pop nice. strap. Wow. and a zippered pouch, yeah. a zippered, zippered pouch inside yeah. zipper. Zando, wow. Zando has some uh, money behind their um, marketing and publicity for sure. This and, is fantasy. Uh, wow. Can I ask you a question about Jillian Flynn? Do we know? Like, is she still a writer or is she just a publisher now? It's awesome that I she's. Don't I don't know. Um, I actually, heard anything in a long time. Maybe at uh, this next sales conference, we can ask the publisher. Yeah. yeah. It, she sounds like she's doing great publishing. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's really nice to see. And, um, this is going to be, um, I think, another book that's going to sell well and um, well into its paperback yeah. iteration. So, yeah, this sounds like I know, Kim, you're looking forward to reading it. It also sounds like a yeah. Laura title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's All right, Kim, to, take it away fun. before Gabe right. leaves us. My next pick is a debut that comes out next week, and it's The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell. It's a modern day locked room mystery, and it takes place on a Vermont estate that hosts an annual summer week long TV baking competition called Bake Week. There are six competitors and the show's host is a celebrated baker, Betsy Martin, dubbed America's grandmother, and she owns the estate. Um, the book is narrated by each of the baking, con baking, uh, baking contestants and by Betsy, and as the show commences, accidents start to happen. At first, it's things like sugar replaced by salt and a burner set too high, but then a dead body is discovered and everyone is suspect. The narrative is full of twists and turns and intriguing characters, and it's really, really fun. It's been described as Knives Out meets The Great British Bake Off, um, or as um, Only Murders in the Building um, meets The Maid. And uh, it's perfect for fans of Richard Osman, Anthony Horowitz, and Nita Prose. And it's also in development as a limited series on Hulu. There you so go. this is great. If you like, like a cozy, it's super fun. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Sounds like another good one. All right, Gabe. Already? Wake up, wake up. I have uh, <laughs> The Marvelous is out tomorrow. Ooh, finally, finally, finally. Hercules, oh, wow. Hercules. So Jules has been talking about it. We talked about it before. If you tuned in before, you've heard about it. Um, oh, yeah. You know, a fun historical novel set in the court of Catherine de, uh, Catherine de Medici? And she is, uh, there is a, a young man who is um, kidnapped, basically, for slave trade, for uh, um, Pedro Gonzalez, like 15, mid-1500s, and he's taken to the royal court. And there he becomes Monsieur Sauvage. How's that for some French? And um, You're on and, it today, Gabe. And becomes a novelty, learns how to, 
learns how to sword fight, learns how to get along um, with the polite uh, society. And um, one day, Catherine de Medici, who apparently took people under her wing, decides that she's going to marry this guy off and finds him a lovely 17-year-old who whose father is quick to uh, toss her in there. So it's the story of a marriage, um, I guess. Um, uh, really, you know, rich setting. I think we got a killer package on it. Um, I won't go on too much, but you know, it's very immersive. I think um, Jules has probably said it best when she said it. Uh, we're really excited. Got to, like I said, I'm. Uh, uh, I think it's the kind of thing that could catch on. It's a little unusual, um, and it's that uh, you know the Beauty and the Beast story. I guess ultimately, yeah, is what this is about. So I uh, check. Check us out. I think it's pretty well done. It's a nice piece. Oh, it's really well done. Yeah. What was that other one? You're going to show the other one? You had another one up there. Uh, no, that was just uh, in case you talked about this. I would have talked about a paperback original. Oh, but okay. The Theory of Almost Everything. Which okay. is like a smart rom-com. All right. There you go. I saw it up there. You didn't talk about it. No, Marvelous is so good. And it's, it's one of those that we do a lot of virtual events with... Um, like Rachel McMillan, who's a Canadian author, who's really good. She was all over this like early. She's like, Julie, find a copy of this. You've got to read it. Oh. It's so good. So um, yeah, it just checks all those boxes. It's just, it's just a good historical with that twist of a fable in it, you know, with the beauty and the beast, but based on, you know, what really happened in the Medici court. So it was very good. It was very good. That yeah. package, you're right, man. The cover package is great. Thanks, great. All right, Tom. Okay, so my this is a perfect lightning round pick because we know about Love and Saffron, now out in paperback. So it just came out a couple of weeks in paperback. Um, number one indie next pick, Warwick's favorite. Warwick's is my leading store in my entire territory for the hardcover. Really? Cover. Still? Yeah, this is oh. just, yeah, this is just going to be one of those books that sells forever and ever. Um, buy it for yourself if you haven't read it. Read it in one sitting, pass it on to a friend um it's it's just a great nostalgic story as we talked about before told in letters um friendship between two generations of women um it's really it's really a nice book um and in a sad coda to the book um it's based on the kim Fay's friend barbara hansen is the is who one of the characters is based on she was a longtime la food writer and she passed away just a couple of weeks ago at night at the age of 90. But she was here. It was wonderful. She was here to do events with Kim um, in L.A. She was able to to see the book come to fruition. So um, in, in that way, it's really nice. Uh, so it's, it, it is a tribute to her. So that's Love and Saffron. Okay. We're working on having her come down here in April for a luncheon. And we're just trying nice. to figure out the dates. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, so she'll do a luncheon and a um, store event, I think. Oh, fantastic. Because she's, I mean, the book is just, it has so much for so many different kinds of readers. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Andrea. Um, let's talk about A Forest Journey, The Role of Trees and the Fate of Civilization. This is by John Perlin. And um, this seminal environmental work, first published in 1986, and then it was um, a Updated in 2005, it gets the Patagonia books treatment here. So it's got some really beautiful um, interior spreads. Ooh. Um, yeah, um, and it's, it's full redesign and uh, even more updated now since the 2005 version. Um, this was chosen as one of Harvard's great books in science and technology. So this volume will basically become the roots and canopy, canopy of every indie bookstore's nature section um, as the years continue on. And um, this is a great gift for any of the tree huggers in your life. So um, it's great. It's $38 and it's how many pages? Let me see here in my little notes. $528 wow. and 520 pages. So what a deal, right? Yeah. No and illustrated on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, they did a great job on this and I'm just happy that this is going to, it's more, it has more trade appeal now. It's not um, as academic as the earlier versions and, and it makes sense because people, there's so many 
people that are learning about the, you know, the magic and glory that are trees. So. Very cool. Nice package. Yep. All right, Kim, take us home. Okay. My last pick is called cat hair cats for cats. And this is a Warwick's bestseller. Um, and the subtitle is Fetching Headwear for Your Feline Friends. It's by Rojaman and Umatan, who are Japanese writers. It's been translated into English. And uh, yeah, it was a total hit in, in Japan and it's a total hit in Warwick's. So it features um, hats that you can make for your cat out of, out of your own cat's cat hair. And they, they explain how to do this and explain that the cat doesn't mind wearing it because it's very, very light and it smells like the cat. And, um, and I'm sorry, they, Kim, you're losing all of us. They, um, they teach you how to collect the hair, you know, how to brush your cat, how to store the cat hair until you have enough to make a, a cat and how to mold them. And uh, also how to take better cat photos. And they have all kinds of, um, you guys are laughing. They have all you. kinds of hats. Okay, Sherlock Holmes. They have- Is um, it a serious book? They have reindeer. It's completely serious. People have oh. um, made these. They has a Halloween witch hat. Oh my God. I mean, I could go on and on. There's Amelia Earhart. Okay. That's um, you know, there's a- Fantastic. There, Amu um, Amelia Earhart. <laughs> Amelia, Amelia Earhart. There's a Princess Leia. There's a Viking. I, I mean, there's like pretty much everything. And um, yeah, this is a great. Um, this is a great gift for so many people. Any cat lover, any any craft person, um, any like environmentally aware person. You know, it's all about recycle, reuse. Um, and a joke for people who hate cats. Um, no, anyway, um, yeah, Runaway Bestseller at Warwick's, just in case um, you didn't know about this book, it um, it, it hits all the- I, all the I'm just gonna make a little prediction. I have a feeling this was one that Adrian may have bought as her farewell to her Warwick. Party <laughs> her party gift to her. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Okay, I'm telling you, this is the easiest hand sell in the whole store. Oh, absolutely. It sells itself. It it's sells hilarious. Itself. It's I totally thought it was weird. a humor book, though. I really did when you first, when I saw the cover. Well, it's sort of a, I mean, it, it, yeah. I mean, it's it's Japan. Only in Japan. Yeah. Right. No, but yeah. I love best restaurants and brought, brought you by your friendly dog. Exactly. Yeah, right. no, you lost me at the fact that they'll wear it because it smells like that. You know, it's, uh, yeah, they, they, um, you know, she, she discovered this accidentally, you know, um, and uh, was it wasn't really an accident. <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. About it. <laughs> I'm not and, sure uh, is... It's got a backstory. Um, oh, I'm sure yeah. it does. Hey, save it's... that for when you buy it. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yes um and, and her yeah. next book her next book will be a, a book on microdosing like you know uh <laughs> ourselves i hope various no. and sundry it's pretty funny that's pretty funny all right we kind of went all over the place today we had there was not a theme today let's just say that <laughs> <laughs> no theme um great books we're going to be talking about other books that we saw at winter institute i'm reading one right now called the night flowers it's a tin house book it's coming out in may it's so good it's another one of those you know um there were a lot of books i have to say that were about um sort of your to your topic tom of the rebecca mckay book about the obsession with cold case murders and women and just like it how our obsession with them and but this person took a really has a really interesting take on um on this so it's very good we'll be talking about it more all right happy reading everybody um okay beth what's your last thing i i have a new cat and never have i accidentally discovered how to make a cat <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna end on that note <laughs> i mean right. how many how many how many have you sold kim at the store do you know 
Uh, I don't know. I'll check tomorrow. I, I'll mm -hmm. I'll update you. Yeah, <laughs> we we do we do need an update. We need an update yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. We'll look through it. Oh, a lot, a lot, because oh. we got this pre-holiday, so this was in a lot of people's stockings. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, everybody, have a good week reading. It's up, and it sells itself. You're right. Exactly, <laughs> and we will see everybody next week. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Thank you.